fond of a diptych of paintings that I painted um, and finished about a month ago. This one's called Chasm 2 and the other one is called Chasm 1. And I painted them with the Australian landscape very much in mind. The um, veins of ochre colours that are available in the Australian outback. Now I painted this with a quote by Joseph Campbell in mind and that quote says um, that there's an American Indian saying to the um, boys who are initiated and it goes, if you see a chasm jump, it's not as far as you think. And I was thinking about that as I was painting because then the pandemic hit us and I was trying to paint paintings of hope that we can do that jump bravely and get through the crisis. But at the same time, I wanted to incorporate our strong Australian landscape. I'm just going to show you the second painting of the diptych. This one is cousin one. And they are a pair, but they can be hung on their own. These paintings can be hung both in landscape format or in portrait format, straight up and down. So they can fit in um, lots of positions, however you like. Now I wanted to um, talk a little bit about how I, what I use to paint the paintings. And I'm just going to pull over my palette here. Now I've, re I've recreated the palette that I used for painting the painting um, and it's all the beautiful earth colours. Um, I use all different types of pigments and I have a wide variety of brands that I choose. Um, unfortunately I can't and won't access pigments from the outback because they belong to a different culture. They belong to the Aboriginal culture. And the Aboriginals value the ochre colours very much because they're used in ceremonies. And the ones that are good for painting, they're not found everywhere in the ground, even though we have a very colourful outback landscape. There are only certain areas where you can get the pigments. And um, the tribes source the pigments from known um, places where the best pigments are and they use them as trade. Now, they have really, really amazing subtleties of colour. Even the difference between that and that is quite vast. The great thing about pigments is that they're a little bit alchemical so that when you actually use them, you get to know their properties and how they react with each other. So a pigment, I'm just going to put my little um, oil binder out. A pigment in its powder form doesn't always look like what the actual paint is when you mix it with a binder. So it can become really, really intense. And that's what I like about pigments is that I control the intensity and the colour saturation very much so rather than somebody mixing it for me in a tube. And um, there are no impurities in my paint, so it's going to last for a very, very long time. I learned about pigments when I was studying at the Dusseldorf Art Academy in Germany from 1989 to 1990. And what happened there was that a paint company donated a whole load of pigments that they weren't going to use anymore to the art school. And we were allowed to go and get as much as we liked and um, 
try to use them. We could go up to the technical department and they taught us how to mix them, what to watch out for and um, how to deal with them both in, a, in an acrylic binder and an oil binder. After that, I started researching the old master's techniques and how they use their pigments and where the pigments came from. And when I started researching where the pigments came from, I found out some incredibly fascinating things. The pigments themselves have wonderful names. This one, for instance, is a greeny brown and it's called mummy. And historically, that pigment was made by grounding the um, mummy's swaddling clothes and making it into a colour. There's a colour called dragon's blood, which was um, said to be from the blood spilled by the fight between an elephant and a dragon. But of course that's not true. It comes from the, um, the stem of a dragonfly tree. 